Hey guys, welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. Now, you probably know that I do a lot of MIDI sequencing. Yes, you've maybe heard my compositions with the DX7 here, the D50, and the M1, and with all of these, I'm using a MIDI sequencer and a computer. So I thought it was time to upgrade my computer, because these MIDI sequencers are quite power intensive, and I wanted a better computer. So let's talk a little bit about the specifications. So, requirement number one. I think it's really important that my new computer has MIDI ports. I'm a little bit fed up of these USB to MIDI converters. It would be really sweet if the computer had MIDI ports built in. So, the second requirement. I'm looking for a more compact case. I'm a little bit fed up of these big tower cases that you have on the floor with a keyboard on the desktop. The thing just takes a lot of space. I'm looking for something that's a little bit more all-in-one. Number three, yes, it's really important that you can store your work. I hate to power off the computer and lose everything that you've done. So this computer needs to have some storage media. I'm thinking floppy disks might be ideal. Next, yes, these sequencer programs can be a little bit demanding. So this computer has to have quite powerful specifications. I'm looking for something that's around at least eight megahertz and I want it to have half a megabyte of RAM. Number five on the list is a mouse. I really want this new computer to have a mouse for moving the cursor around the screen. I'm sure that mice are the future. Another problem with my current computer is the fans. They're always blowing and making a heck of a racket. So my next computer has to be fan free and completely silent operation. Finally then, number eight, I'm looking for quite a high resolution screen so that I can really see the details of the MIDI sequences that I'm editing. And I've been looking at the specifications. I want one that can do 640 pixels by 400, but a bit of a trade-off is I'd have to take a monochrome black and white display, but I think I can live with that. And I found a computer that meets all the requirements. It's over there. So let's take the camera over there. We'll unbox it and hook it up to the monitor and check it out. So here it is. What we have here is an Atari 520 STE. Yes, this is the E model, which is the latest and greatest of the Atari ST range. So let's open this one up and test it. Yeah, obviously, guys, I've been pulling your leg a little bit during this video, but I guess you figured that out fairly early on. Uh, this is a Atari 520 STE in the box, which is kind of unusual, I guess, because this computer is from 1987, 88, around there somewhere. And I used to own one of these together with this and a Roland MT32 and a Roland D10. I was sequencing stuff back in 1988. So it's going to be really awesome to test this out now and see if I can relive some of these nostalgic memories I have from that time. So let's open this thing up and see what we have. Um, okay, there's a whole bunch of manuals and stuff, which is kind of nice to have, isn't it? Let's just take a look, see what we've got. The Atari STA, let's get this right on the screen. There we go. Atari ST Basic Quick Reference Guide. We have the personal software music maker. So this thing did come with some music software, but I'm not gonna be using that. On this, we're gonna be using Cubase and perhaps Pro 24, which was the version that came out before Cubase. Yes, Steinberg Cubase. 2.0, the very first version of Cubase, it all started with the Atari. We have a organizer. We got, I've got manuals and stuff. Unfortunately, the discs are missing, but it's quite nice to have all the catalogs and things. This is basic, high soft, personal software, first basic. A whole bunch of bits and pieces. This is the user guide then. It's a 1040 ST user guide, but I guess the functions are pretty much the same. And we have another basic thing here. Missing the discs, unfortunately. A few bits and pieces, addendums to the various manuals. So that's pretty cool to get all this stuff. And this is a Swedish computer as well. Swedish sold. The guy I bought it from said that he was the one that bought it new, sort of. 30 years ago, so that's pretty cool. Only one owner before me. What else do we have? Yes, the all important, if I can get it out, 
the all-important Atari mouse, a very clunky looking thing with... <laughs> you remember when mice had these guys? I'd almost forgotten. Yeah, you youngsters don't know what that is, but that's a, a ball that you used to have in mice. This was way before optical LED mice, of course. And may I add, no USB, of course, here. This is some proprietary joystick connector thing. Let's put the cables over here. Yeah, we've got a power cable there, by the way. And we also have, this is the one that I need to use to connect it to my TV. This is a, which is what I used to use, do back in the day. This is a antenna cable thing. I've owned two Ataris in the past. The first one I got, uh, both in the 80s. The first one I got was the Atari 520. Then, and I used that connected to the TV. Then I eventually upgraded to an Atari 1040. And that one came with a monochrome monitor. I think I was using Cubase on the later one and Pro 24 on the first one, but it's a long time ago and I don't really remember. Right, let's get the computer out then so you can have a look. But guys, how cool is this to get an Atari in the box? It's pretty awesome, isn't it? I'll put it down here on my piano stool. Let's get this polystyrene off. Thrown away. Is this upside down? I'm not sure. I think it is. So here it is then guys, this is the music computer that started it all and I think some guys are even using this to this very day because it's such a capable computer. Of course this thing has no internet, no viruses, nothing like that to worry about. It's really really good apparently on the MIDI timing. And uh, there you go, a beautiful old school music computer. So the colour looks a little bit weird. It's darker than I thought it would be. I thought mine was cream coloured, the one I had before, but maybe this being the STE, which is the ST enhanced model, has slightly it was a different colour scheme. I'm not quite sure. But uh, the nice thing is there's none of this yellowing that's really, really ugly. You know, the horrible UV effect on the plastic where it all gets yellow. This is still quite a handsome greyish brown colour. And it looks like it's in very nice condition. There's no wear and tear on the keys, is there? Normally on the keyboard, you know, you can see if someone's been using it a lot. I don't think this has been used very much at all. Uh, over here then, I just want to show you why this computer was so special for musicians and why it sort of beat the Amiga and the Macintosh in the sequencing MIDI world. And that's because of these two connectors here. That's your MIDI in and your MIDI out. There we go, sorry. The MIDI in and your MIDI out, whichever way it is around which was pretty unique for this computer at the time. In fact, I'm pretty sure this is the only computer ever to have MIDI inputs and outputs. Looking around the back then, an array of connectors there. This is where we're going to connect it to the TV in a second. There's also a monitor connector. Uh, one of these, I'm not sure which one. I can't see right now. But uh, the monitor connector is what you use to connect it to an Atari uh, monochrome or colour monitor or perhaps a CRT TV, I'm not quite sure. These days there's lots of adapters you can use to connect them to VGA monitors and TVs via SCART cables, but I only have this very old fashioned antenna cable. Uh, on this side, yep, yeah, I said it was important with some storage. We have a floppy disk drive there on the side, a three and a half inch floppy disk drive. I have no floppy disks anymore. I threw them away a long time ago. I don't even have a... Uh, a floppy drive reader on my PCs anymore, which is a shame because then I would be able to create disks with the sequencer software and, and load them onto this, but I don't have those. Um, yep, yeah, the cool thing is that the, the PC and the Atari can read the same disks, so you can download stuff on the PC, write them onto a floppy disk, and then load it onto the Atari, although I've done some reading about it and it looks to be quite a painful process. What I've actually done is reached out to some guys on Facebook and asked them if anybody there would be willing to help me out and send me a floppy disk with a sequencer pre-installed so that I don't have to mess around and waste hours doing that. I don't have the tools or the knowledge 
to do that. By the way, yeah, I have no idea if this works. The guy I bought it from said, oh, 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 it's not possible to connect it to a TV. He was not able to show me that it was working. So I bought this thing completely untested. I have no idea if it works, so I'm dying to find out. Let's do that now. All right, let's connect this up. Let's uh, plug in the power cable first. That's gonna go in there, of course. Pretty standard stuff, I'm happy to say. Oh, a built-in power supply. That's pretty unusual as well, isn't it? The antenna cable. So some models of the Atari didn't have the RF modulator built in, meaning you couldn't connect it to a TV. This one does, which is good. Uh, so that goes in like so. The other end perhaps goes in there. There we are. And the mouse then will plug in as well. Okay, let's find the port for that one. Be one of these. No? Oh, strange. Where did the mouse go? Oh, of course. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah. The mouse goes on the bottom in this one of these. I don't know if it matters which one I plug it into. Let's take that one there. There we go. That's in there. That's pretty smart, I think. Getting it out of the way and coming out of the front of the computer, which is where you want it. So move this crap over there, put the mouse down by the side, there we go. Uh, plug this in and we're ready to test, okay. Right, um, the lights are lighting up, which is a really good sign, there's one there, one there. And it's making noises. It sounds like it's trying to read from the disk drive, but there's nothing in there. And I'm pretty sure this thing boots from the ROM. The operating system is stored in ROM. So we don't need a disk, but um, nothing showing up on the screen, which is a little bit concerning. Is the screen showing up there? Yeah. No signal. Let's d double check the connections here. See no effect at all. So it's going into the antenna input on the TV. And I'm getting nothing at all. Is this thing duff? Did I buy a lemon, guys? You never know. When you're buying this stuff untested, you're taking a risk, of course. I was able to t take a little bit off the price because I had no idea if it worked or not. The guy assured me it did, but you never know. Uh, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research here, so I'll cut the video and come back in a second. Okay, you guys were probably screaming at the TV in frustration. Yeah, I've just remembered how it used to be. Of course, we have to tune the TV to the signal that's coming from the Atari here. They're not going to automatically connect to each other as if it was some magical digital signal. Yeah, we actually have to go into the settings here and tune the TV, so I'll do that now. Okay, I'll see if the TV can detect the Atari. Let's go for it. Auto installing now. Yes, start. The type of connection is analog. No digital here. Analog, go. Okay, it's searching. Uh, I'll pause the video here and we'll come back when it's done. It's gonna take a little while. There it goes, 2%, 3%. So uh, bear with me and hopefully we get a picture. Look guys, a picture, it's there, it's working. This thing works, amazing, after 30 years. And look, the, the mouse is moving around. Okay, how do I, how do I um, get the full screen here? Here we go. Okay, you all, this is what an operating system looked like in 1987. Just green, black, and white. Just three colors on display here and huge big icons here. I'm very happy to report that it's working. I've got a mouse here that's extremely crappy and jerky. Oh, this is not going to be fun to use, I tell you. Maybe, maybe we need to clean this mouse a little bit and perhaps that will do the trick, I don't know. In fact, I think you can buy adapters so you can plug in PC mice to this thing as well. Uh, but this is pretty much it. There's not much you can do here. Is any settings? Oh, 
I see everything's in Swedish as well. But it's okay, I can read Swedish, that's not a problem. But if you were to put in a uh, diskette, it boots from the diskette anyway, so you could uh, put in an English disk if you wanted to. Grund in Stalninger, that's uh, settings. And the, uh, does the buttons work? No, I don't think they do. Oh. Okay, <laughs> there's not much I can show you today, guys. We don't have a working mouse. Is there, can I do anything here? It's really horrible, actually. Let's just try the other port. See if that's any better. Maybe it's not in there all the way, actually. Over it, that's other stuff. Yes, the mouse works now, okay. So what can we do? We can change the build quams, up lursting, that's the resolution of the screen. We're on low right now. Let's see what uh, medium looks like. High, I'm not able to choose because you do need this black and white monitor to do that. Let's go to OK. It's now changing resolutions. The disk drive is whirring away. Oh, it says it's looking for a disk, but it can't find one. Oh. Yes, yes. Of breach, cancel. Oh, OK. Now you've got glorious high resolution. Let me show you that on the screen if I zoom in a little bit here. So that is... The Atari ST desktop is called TOS. Yes, people that used Ataris back in the day were called tossers. It's true. Desktop info, I'll show you that in a second. If I can just get this mouse to cooperate, it's blimmin' awful. Ah! Come on! Oh, it makes noises too. Desktop, there we go. Got it. Gem Graphics Environment Manager TOS. There we go, TOS. Copyright 1985, 88, 86, 87, 88, 89. So anyway, guys, I think we'll finish here. I'm extremely happy that this is working. I tell you, I'm stoked. An Atari ST, again, after 30 years, how awesome is that? And it works. Um, but not much more I can do today. Oh, that camera's leaning a bit. Not a lot more I can do today because I need some discs. I don't have any discs. So hopefully the people I reached out to on Facebook can help me with that. Um, and they can send me a copy of Cubase or Pro 24 on a floppy disk that we can put in and do some sequencing. I'll connect it to uh, the M M1 perhaps, which is about the right vintage. Or hopefully I can find the D10 or an MT32, which is what I used to use. So we can recreate my sequencing setup of 30 years ago. I think that would be awesome. And I hope you enjoy it too. Guys, that's a wrap. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great day. Oh, remember to like and subscribe. I appreciate that a lot. Thanks a lot. See you later. Ta-da.